Hello there. Once again, it's Anton from Anton Mobile Bay. Thank you for stopping by the collection room on this beautiful morning. Um, I always appreciate it. Today we're looking at some comics. It's Alpha Flight. We're continuing our way through all of the Alpha Flights. Um, we're up to 53 through 56. And if you're interested in seeing any of the videos before this, uh, they are all on their own playlist now. So, you know, if, you'll observe, if you want to go through and watch uh, all the Alpha Flight stuff, you can. I will get to the end of the series, I swear. It may take some time, but we'll get there. Um, issue 53, of course, we got uh, Wolverine popping out of the box, and I always thought this was a really cool cover. I don't even really, like, care for Wolverine stuff. Uh, I do love the brown outfit the most, but his interactions with Alpha Flight are usually pretty interesting, so I appreciate that. Um, looks like the base has gotten destroyed. And just as a reference, this is 1987. Um, so their big cool mansion that they live in, uh, gets destroyed randomly. Not near as much as X-Men's, uh, mansion does, but it does occasionally. And we got Wolverine coming to check out what's going wrong. Oof, watch our my pages. Problems. We got kind of what built up to it going on. And at this point, I think we're running on the Purple Girl, um, Madison Jeffries, uh, what's that dude's name? Mannequin. Um, it's it's that lineup. And I think we're still running with uh, the white Sasquatch and so-and-so in, in his body. Um, I did come across this. Uh, this is, I guess, like a pretty good interpretation of, uh, doing like a brain scan on somebody. This page, I think, might take the record of the most comic book panels I've ever seen in a single page. That, there's a lot, lot there. You got Vindicator, Freak Out, Sasquatch, Janice, Purple Girl, Breakdown, Mannequin, and Goblin. And you've got just a whole bunch going on there. It's very cool for one panel, for one page. That's a lot of panels. And I thought it was a really brilliant way of kind of showing us who each person is through the tiny boxes. East Coast Comics, the best place to order comics. I, I will hold on. Just gonna look real quick. Secret Origins, 75 cents. Marvel Age, 50 cents. It's just crazy how cheap their stuff was. Anyway, I could sit and look at those. I don't know why. I just, I totally adore those. Zit commercials. Back when teenagers used to have zits, apparently. Uh, don't see any advertisements like that anymore. Uh, got kind of a scuffle going on between the, um, oh, what is the name of this team? The Derangers. Uh, they're people that they got out of a mental institution to fight Alpha Flight. Pretty weird stuff. The Fall of Mutants. It's always darkest before the... Oh. So Walter Langowski is still in the body of Snowbird, and he turns into a Sasquatch. Still going on with that storyline. Um, kind of wondering... I, I don't remember when he gets his original body back and becomes orange again, but... Um, this the line where uh, white Squ white Sasquatch does run a long time. Not a bad arc, but an arc nonetheless. Heather doing her best there. Now at least Mac can rest in peace and start to love again. I can let Mac, re Mac rest in peace and start to love again. Um, I always thought that was kind of a cool story arc. Um, and, and one of the heavier ones. I mean, technically we see it in uh, the original X-Men story where Scott Summers gets over the death of Jean Grey and the Dark Phoenix Saga where he leaves the X-Men and all that stuff. But it's just interesting because it's like role reversal um, in Alpha Flight as Heather slowly but surely gets over the, the loss of her husband and learns to love someone else. That's kind of neat. Goblin. The I, I used to have a dog that reminded me of Goblin. Fierce. Skittish. I didn't like it. It wasn't technically mine, but 
stepdaughter's dog. Pow! As Marky Mark would say. I really like the Purple Girl stuff. Um, I think she's a cool, complex character. Just by how, like, her power works and who her dad is and just so much about it. it, it I thought it was really interesting. Um, the Goblin and the Girl, I don't think it's quite as interesting. Uh, where the Goblin, like, comes out and, like, takes her place to protect her. And it's kind of weird. Because you end up having, like, a feral pet on the team. It just doesn't make sense for a, a team to have a, a feral little monster. You know, that's not, like, intelligent. So, like, Wolverine kind of makes sense a lot. But, like, the Goblin, not so much. Oh, getting a lecture. Goblin had her chance. She keeps mauling the other teammates, guys. What are we supposed to do with that? Look, it's crying. How can you get rid of it if it's crying? I mean, it's only killed three or four people. It's not that big a deal. I mean, come on. Big Bad Box versus Tundra. I mean, you wanted to see it, except that, I mean, there's just no way, because Tundra is, like, so much bigger. Uh, he would have to, like, uh, somehow amass all the steel from, like, most of Canada in order to fight Tundra. It's ridiculous. Wanda, is anything wrong? Well, no kidding. He's Walter Langowski. He's not Wanda. He's not Snowbird. Um, oh, beast. I love how Heather looks. She never looks so ravishing. It's always just like modest Canadian housewife in a superhero suit. Perfectly done. I uh, wonder where the government couldn't get at us. Eyebrow helped me. Okay, Mannequin's powers, I still, I hate the most um, of, of any of them. Because it's just ridiculous. Three forms of himself. It's, I mean, it's like, ugh. Cringe. Tundra, the greatest of the great beasts. I mentioned it numerous times um, that this is the third time I've owned Alpha Flight, the full run. And that's, that makes sense. It means I like it. However, I also want to point out that means I've been willing to get rid of the entire set of Alpha Flight twice. And I've given away many, many issues of my extras. Just kind of tossed them at people. Um, as much as I love the series, sometimes it is so frustrating. Um, you guys have heard me talk about how, how uh, well, basically boring I thought some of John Byrne's work was on it. Because nothing happened. Like, absolutely nothing happened. And then how uh, weird and cringy some of the later writing is with, like, the death of Mac and how he comes back. And he's not really back, but he is back. Um, uh, oh, what's the other really cringy stories? Puck. He's not really, like, uh, a dwarf. He's, like, really a an old man who shrunk down by a genie and a lamp. And that's super stupid story. Um, there's the super stupid, super stupid story of, uh, uh, North Star and Aurora being like half elven children. And that's why their ears are pointed. And, uh, just so many things like that. And then they'll go, they'll take this concept, they'll run with it. And then they'll go, Oh, well that wasn't true. That was a fake story, but you know, it might come back that that's real. So, there was, there's just so many ultra cringy, uh, bad writing decisions that make Alpha Flight sometimes very, very tough to enjoy. And uh, some of the characters in this time period, uh, 
are one of the ones that make it hard to enjoy. I remember the goblin and mannequin both are this one person who like manifests into another person and they just, it's so irritating. Like that's such a crappy power. And at the same time, they'll have some really great characters, great powers going on, but some of the others, like Madison Jeffries, uh, Box's powers are awesome. Uh, Purple Girl's powers, awesome powers. Very interesting to to deal with in the context of a story. And some of these other characters, uh, it's just so not interesting and so stupid. And also, like, characters that you really like are not there. Like, is Puck even on the team at this point? I don't believe so. And uh, Shaman is not on the team right now. Talisman, not on the team right now. And Box is just, you know, being a chair. Captain's chair. Some of it's cool. Some of it's not. And, yeah. So that's why sometimes I love the book. Sometimes you will hear me uh, uh, complain about the book. Because sometimes it's really, really stupid. And painfully so. And so part of it is, of course, the, what, the reasons why I like comics. And then there's... There's another aspect of Alpha Flight, which exemplifies why I don't like comics uh, in a lot of ways. The, the cringy, terrible part of comics. And you see that, I think a lot of it has taken over most co modern comics now as all cringy part to me. But, um, you know, you see it, you see it ebbing into uh, the mainstream through a lot of it through Alpha Flight was was one of the things I always noticed. I don't know if John Byrne in, intended it to be that way or if it just kind of like the like they kept throwing bad writers at it because nobody wanted to work on Alpha Flight and that eventually, you know, kind of um, became the norm. But either way, it's a series I both love and uh, sometimes I'm very embarrassed by. Uh, but either way, I appreciate you guys stopping by, uh, sitting through my ramblings, sitting, uh, watching me flip through some comics and have some coffee this morning. It's It's a very beautiful morning. Thank you guys for watching. Uh, that's my story. I will catch you guys later. Bye.